I had this question asked of me, and the question was, how normal do you think you are? Ask someone around you right now, how normal are you? <laughs> well, well, the truth is everyone seems normal until you actually get to know them. So look at someone right now and figure out if you think this person is normal or not. And let me assure you, no matter how normal you look, everyone in this who's gathered here in Central Park has a unique story. Your story has its own plot and twist. You know, actually, one of my favorite verses in Scripture comes from Psalm 56, verse 8. And when David says in the Psalms, he says that God actually keeps a record of my tears in a bottle. Can you imagine that? A record of your tears. Meaning God sees everyone's story. But actually the, word, the, the Hebrew word for tears is actually not just exclusive to or limited to the word tears. It's also tossing. How many people here have trouble sleeping sometimes? You're tossing and turning. Sometimes because you can't even cry if you want because what's going on in your life is so just frustrating where you have no more. You want to cry, but you can't. So David says that God actually sees not only my tears, but he sees me tossing and turning. But Jesus also says in the New Testament that God actually can number the hair on your head. So let me tell you when... I get older, I have two kids now. My son, who is, he's 14 days old, is here, right here, back there. Yeah, he's crying. He's gonna be a preacher one day. But I could tell you, as, the, as older I get, more and more, it didn't mean that much to me when I was younger, but as the, the older I get and live life, I appreciate the fact that God sees me at every moment in my life. Because the truth is, we don't like people seeing us all the time, do we? We don't want people to see us in a mess, when we're stressed, when we're in distress. We actually, at those moments of our life when we struggle, we what? We isolate ourselves, we seclude ourselves, and we go into this dark place where we try to get ourselves together, and then we rejoin the world again when we're okay. But here is the main thing, and this is what I want you to tell your neighbor, okay? Tell, tell, tell this person next to you what you don't want. Tell them again, what you don't want oftentimes is what you need. God understands that what you don't want sometimes and even what you fear is what you need most. And this is what we call love. You see, intimacy is actually how it's spelled. Into what? See, look, in, look inside of your heart right now. Look down. Look into you. See, if, when you translate that reverse, it's see into me. Into me, see. And the truth is, we fear people look into being, you know, seeing into us because we're not perfect. We're not together. We have problems. We have issues. And we're going through things. But, you know, I appreciate more and more every day that God sees me unconditionally and still loves me. Amen? And this is what John, this passage in John is all about. When Jesus in this passage says to Simon, I'm going to wash your feet. How many people he here have dirty feet? <laughs> Where you, I mean, sometimes in the summer you wear shoes without socks. How many people do that? And, you, and your feet stink. I mean, not stink, stink. And, and when you take your shoe, people will be like, put that thing back on right now. And what Jesus is showing in this analogy is that actually your feet tell you where you've been. And sometimes where we've been, we're not always proud of, but God knows where we've been. And what Jesus is showing Peter here is that I know, I see you. And I know where you've been. I know every place you've been in your heart with your feet. And I accept you, and I forgive you, and I want you. This is what I want you to catch in this passage where Jesus washes the feet of a disciple, the king of the universe, the God, the second person of the Trinity, is washing his disciples' feet. Usually that doesn't happen. 
And two things I want you to catch about this passage before we go into baptism today. And that's simple. First is Peter's reluctance to be loved that way. Right? Because who's not reluctant to be touched in the most vulnerable places in their life, right? I mean, for example, how many people here, when a, when a guest comes over your house, you, you clean your house? Right? Because your house is usually messy. Your bathroom is disgusting. And you know what? We want to show people when they come over that this is my house. We have no dust. <laughs> Our hygiene is up to par. And what you're, de what you're doing is deceiving people because the truth is just like you and everybody else, the house is messy and that's how you really live and that's how you really are when you try to clean it up. And, you, and when people go, can I come over? And you go, no, don't come over today because your house is messy. And you see, that's the point of Peter's reluctance here. I'm, I'm messy, Jesus. I have sin you not know of. I have sins in the heart and sins in my body that you know of. And Jesus says, I see the reluctance. I see why you're reluctant for me to wash you. But this is why I need to wash you. So the first part is why Peter says, no, don't wash me. I'm dirty. And we all can identify with the sins of our lives, whether you're being baptized or not, or where you're hearing the gospel today for the first time, we're all not very normal. Tell someone, thank God. And here you see the grace of the passage. The first thing you see in this passage is why we resist intimacy or being loved or real love is because we're reluctant for people to see the deepest part of us that's messy and broken and sinful. Second is, you know what? God doesn't care if you're messy. Jesus says to Peter, what does he say? Peter, Simon, that's his, like, that's his like nickname. That Peter called pet name. Simon, if I don't wash your feet, you can have no part of me. Jesus, although of his reluctance, is insistent. Jesus is rude. Because I don't care. How many people here, when you're struggling and someone comes to you, asks you that million dollar question you hate? What's wrong? And when you're struggling, when someone asks you what's wrong, that, that hits you right in the bullseye of your heart, you, you get mad at them for being right. My wife goes, what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with me. I'm perfect, peachy right now. She goes, no, what's wrong with you? No, get away from me. Lee, and then our classic favorite, leave me alone. Do we really want them to leave us? A part of us does because we don't want people in. See into me. But my wife is insistent. <laughs> Tell me what's wrong. And she pushes through. And here you see Peter's transformation and the power of the gospel will be demonstrated very clearly. Peter goes, okay, if you're going to wash my feet, wash my hands. Wash my head. Wash my whole body. Jesus is like, nah, let's not go there. <laughs> now, th <laughs> this, this is a point where you see where people become so close to you where they used to be strangers that come into your house. You don't even, well, they go, I'm going to come over. You go, I don't care. Come over. You don't even clean anymore. <laughs> You like just come, and they come over and they just go to your. They used to be courteous and be like, "Can I have a drink? You know, a glass of water." Now they just go to your fridge, start eating out of it, drinking out of the curtain carton. You're like, "Why the hell are you here?" And that's what you call intimacy. That's what you call love. And that really is the pack of the gospel. That's what the gospel looks like. That's why it's good news, people. It's not for perfect people. It's for broken people. It's for people that need forgiveness. Need love, but afraid of it. Why? Well, in the end, the gospel is all about what we fear most is what we need most, and God understands that. God sees that. He sees our reluctance, but he insists anyway. He goes, I'm your dad. I'm your father. Today, wherever you might be in your journey of faith, whether you're down God's block and you're running away, whether you're right on the doorstep, don't know how to get in, or whether you're inside the house in his family. Let me just tell you this. You don't need to fear that God's going to reject you because my life is messed up. Because the truth is, all our lives are messed up and our houses are messed up. And God knows what we fear most is what we need most. And that's love, and that's the gospel news. And this is why it's good news. Tell someone, that's good news. That's the gospel. So, I'm going to invite... 
my wife that's recovering to come and play this song for us. Will you stand with me? And we're going to pray together. People, I love the gospel so much because it's good news to people that are not perfect and people that are go through life struggling and God sees all of that and accepts us and invites us. And I want to let you know right now that even when you're suffering, even when you're going through hard times, that God is always there. So right now, as a sign that you're receiving from your Father, will you just lift your hands with me right now? And we're going to sing this song uh, so close. And a chorus, the bridge goes like this, all along you were beside me, even when I couldn't tell. Uh, through the years, you showed me more of you. And I want to just have a reflective moment as Pastor Lydia plays. I want you to reflect about this here. And I want you to think of all the hard times. Times that didn't make any sense at all to you. And you're like, God, why is this happening? God, where are you? In the Psalms, David prays that all the time. God, why are you hiding your face from me? And this song tells the truth. That all along, he was beside me, even when I couldn't tell. He was there. All along, you were beside me, even when I couldn't tell. All along. All along, you were beside me, even when I couldn't tell. All along. All along, you were beside me. Even when I couldn't tell Through the years Through the years You showed me more of you Don't be shy, sing that You were beside me Even when I couldn't tell All along all along. Come on, sing it louder. Like you're an American Idol. Come on. Through the years. Through the years. You showed me more of you. More of you. So close. So close, I believe. You're holding me now in your hands. I belong. You'll never let me go. So close, I believe. In your hands. Father, I want to pray this afternoon. wherever we might be. I want you to know, far close, in between, I want to let you know right now that God the Father sees every tear, the Bible says, every tossing of your life and has a record of it. And today, as a symbol of people being baptized into God's family, I want to let you know today, the symbol of baptism of having water anoint your head. That's what they used to do in Israel when they used to anoint a king. They would anoint oil on their head. And they would pray, God, let the favor of God's hand be on you. And today as we do this, I want to let you know that what we're doing is washing you, washing our sins. And God's saying, I see into you Yes, and I see dirt, I see pain, I see hurt. But I'm redeeming you. 
I'm redeeming your life. I'm healing you and I'm loving you. So if you're being baptized today, can you just make a line here and come? That's why the Bible says that God is love, and love is not of this world, but from you. We thank you, God, that you're healing, redeeming, saving all of us. Now we have a Father we can go to in any condition, in any circumstance. We thank you for today, and we praise you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give God the Father a clap offering. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Rowe, Director of Administration at 180 Church. Uh, we have a few announcements for you. Uh, for those of you that received the email, please read along. The Sunday announcement's right there for you. Let's begin with the tithes and offering. Um, if you're a member of our church, uh, remember to tithe faithfully. Um, it's, a, it's a big thing, it's a part of a disciple. It's a part of saying that, um, God, you're the provider, God, you're in control, you're, you're the everything. Uh, for those visitors that's here and felt blessed by today's service, please feel free to donate. Um, there's a couple of ways in doing that, uh, one of which is the on-site. We have uh, envelopes at info booth. It's standing alone on that table near where all the goodies are at. Uh, so you could actually donate through uh, cash or check. We also have uh, two online features. Uh, for those of you that are uh, Chase customers, you could actually do Chase Quick Pay and send it to offering at 18church.tv. Uh, people that are PayPal users could actually go to our church website and uh, visit there at our giving page. Uh, next, we have uh, prayer requests. For prayer requests and praises, email us at prayer at 180church.tv. Uh, you can also even text us, 539 uh, prayer Once again, it's 539 prayer uh, This is a great way to have uh, your spiritual brothers and sisters uh, supporting you in the best of times and even the worst of times. Uh, personally, for me, um, my family and I uh, discovered that my dad's diagnosed with uh, TPLL leukemia. Um, it's one of those rare, aggressive type uh, blood cancer. Um, it was most disturbing news, it's probably the most harshest news, but knowing that God's there with us and knowing that um, my brothers and sisters here that's praying for us makes all the difference in the world, and we definitely thank you for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's actually a passage, James chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will have been forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is a powerful and effective. Amen for that. Uh, next, we have two major events for our Father House project. Um, the first one will be at a basketball tournament. Uh, we're supposed to be scheduled this month, but we're actually going to push back to October. But one thing for sure is going to be held at Fast Break. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Follow us on Facebook. If you have any questions, you can always ask Eddie. He's right over there in the green jacket. And Min Young, she's right there as well. Um, for also, we also have the volleyball players. That's more the people that's been into volleyball lately. We have volleyball. The official date will be September 1st, 8.30. Um, it's going to be at Merrill Park in New Jersey. Uh, you could have, if you have any questions, you can always ask Pastor Billy. 
festivals, he's got me in the back. He's coming with glasses and soft blue polo shirt. So you can always ask him. Or you can email him, billykim.180 at gmail.com. Uh, finally, we have small groups. We have small groups weekly here in Manhattan and as well as in Staten Island. Uh, if you're interested in joining our small group, uh, you can actually text us through that same uh, text number, 539 prayer And please leave your, me uh, your name and message, and we will uh, put you in the right small, small group in the right location. Um, for those high schoolers that graduated, congratulations, you guys. You probably guys going to be starting up soon, right? Exciting, exciting time, big times. Uh, good luck to you all. Uh, the exam's pretty rough. <laughs> Uh, please make sure to jo join the college uh, small group. So yeah, uh, it's good to have small group um, members that's there for you at every step of the way of the transition. Um, and let's just close with prayer, and then we can all get to eat. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful weather where we get to celebrate uh, your your sons and daughters here today. Uh, no matter what transition uh, we're in, um, no matter what difficulties we may be going through. Um, you're always there for us, and you're always uh, loving us unconditionally. And um, yeah, so we just want to give this day to you, and uh, remember uh, remember the sermon throughout this week. Just name and pray. Amen. Have fun, guys.